All right, today we are talking about how to write a stronger bio sketch and specifically some tips for early career researchers and things you need to pay attention to as an early career researcher writing your bio sketch. So if you're new around here, my name is Sarah Dobson. Uh, I'm a research grant consultant and my team and I help early career researchers get funded at NIH. So this is one of my favorite topics. I love reading people's bio sketches and uh, giving them pointers because it's one of the places where there are a lot of sort of areas for improvement that I see and, and, and easy places to make your application stand out more. And so that's what I want to talk about today and and specifically in a bio sketch we're really just looking at two areas in the bio sketch where you have the opportunity to do something a little bit unique and that of course is in your personal statement and then in your contributions to science so let's talk about each of those um, so in your personal statement, that's where you're really giving an overview of, you know, who you are as a scientist, uh, the expertise and experience that you have, and, you know, the, the sort of publications and grants that demonstrate that expertise and experience. But one of the things I see often with early career researchers is that they're sort of undermining their own expertise and experience by describing themselves still in a very sort of junior way. That's that's the easiest way to explain it. Is you're um, you're you're kind of holding back a little bit on who you are as a researcher and describing yourself more like you would. Uh, if you were a trainee and writing, you know, a career development award application, for example. And so as you move into these bigger, uh, larger scope research project grants, you and, and especially if you are doing that as a PI, you really have to present yourself as somebody who is at that level. Right. And so some of the ways that you might undermine that is by talking about yourself still in that sort of trainee mode or that you're still sort of learning really. And, and it's just as simple as some of the language that you use, right? And so if you're describing yourself as more at that sort of PI and, and leadership level, you wanna be talking about your, your program of research. You wanna be talking about the sort of expertise that you have developed in a particular area and kind of where you see that going rather than describing yourself more as somebody who's learning a set of skills or have contributed to projects, right? Um, those are some easy differences in terms of how you would describe yourself as, um, as a PI versus as a trainee. So be careful with the, the language that you use in your personal statement to describe yourself and your expertise. And obviously, you know, you don't want to, um, you don't want to misrepresent yourself, of course, but just pay attention to the, the language you're using and see where you might be able to, um, or where you might be undermining yourself or, um, or not presenting the full scope of your abilities and experience. Um, maybe because you just you don't feel like you're quite there yet, but in in the role that you are enacting as a PI, you actually are there, and so you have to you have to really put yourself forward in that way. The other area where I see you can make a lot of really important improvements to your bio sketch is, of course, the contributions to science section. And this is one where the NIH has actually given you some really great guidelines in terms of how to structure that section. But a lot of the bio sketches that my team and I read don't even follow those basic instructions. And that, in my opinion, is a, is a missed opportunity. It's a really, the, what the NIH has given you in terms of guidelines is a really simple 
way to provide context for your contribution to science in a way that lays things out in a really logical way. And so I highly, highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with those guidelines and just follow that structure. And it's really, I mean, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that in general, I recommend always moving from broad to specific to be able to provide that context and, and help your reader sort of understand where it is that you're going. And it's the same thing in a contribution to science. You're talking about the context for the the scientific problem that you're trying to solve you're asked to describe the um you know the the outcomes that you were able to achieve with the project you're asked to describe your contribution to those outcomes and ultimately the impact that those outcomes had on the field right and so all of that is very structured um, and it's organized in a way that allows you to really convey that very clearly. So truly, all you have to do is follow the NIH instructions. But there are a couple of other things you can do in the contributions to science section that will really improve the quality of your bio sketch. And that is having a title for each of your contributions, right? So bare minimum, make sure that you have a title for each of your contributions. But that title needs to be more than just sort of a, you know, a subject matter area or uh, a basic description of, you know, something pretty broad, right? You want to make sure that the title of the contribution describes the contribution. And I know that a lot of people get hung up on this because they're usually trying to include sort of multiple contributions or describe multiple projects within one contribution. But there's a reason that you've included several projects under one description. And so you need to find what that sort of common theme or that overarching contribution actually is. Figure out what that is and then describe it in a way that really conveys what the what the contribution to science is and not just a general sort of subject matter area or, um, you know, categorical description, right? You really want to make sure that you're describing what the contribution actually is. And so those are two, I think, really strong ways that you as an early career researcher can improve the quality of your bio sketch, even if you're feeling, you know, early in your career that you don't have a fully fleshed out bio sketch. I think if you make those changes that we've talked about here, you are going to find that the information that you include in the bio sketch that you do have as you are building that expertise and experience throughout your career that you have got a really good solid starting point for a really strong bio sketch and what you are conveying with the document you have is really good and you're only going to build on that over time right you're only going to build on those contributions you're only going to be able to describe more and um, better, uh, you know, expertise and experience in that uh, personal statement section. So really just start with what you have, make it as good as you possibly can, and continue to build on it. And of course, if you've watched any, I have a whole series of biosketch videos. So if you've watched any of the other ones, you'll know that my number one tip for your biosketch, of course, of course, is to tailor it to the grant that you are submitting, right? Whether you are PI, whether you are a co-investigator or a collaborator on a project, make sure that each and every biosketch that you submit is tailored to that project and that you're describing your role and responsibilities on that specific project and how your expertise and experience relates to the project itself, right? So relates to those roles and responsibilities that you have on the project. So all of that uh, is key to uh, a competitive bio sketch, a bio sketch that really adds something to the proposal. So if you found this helpful, I strongly encourage you to sign up for our free resource library. There is a link in the video description below, so make sure that you sign up for that. There are lots of tools and tutorials in there to help you write a better NIH grant.